Good morning. Good morning. Is this working? Yes. Now it is. Okay. I'll get adjusted. You have to give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to share with all of you this morning. In traditional way, this is the last Sunday of the church year. It would also be known as the end times. It's also be known as Christ the King Sunday. But last year after Thanksgiving, Pastor and I talked. And then he said he was going to talk with the elders and everybody else. And we decided that the attendance on Thanksgiving Eve and Thanksgiving Day has kind of gone like this. So today's Thanksgiving. So we move Thanksgiving Day to today. So you will find the lessons and the hymns and everything else for today are for Thanksgiving, which is this Thursday. So um, this is our celebration of Thanksgiving. It is an honor and a privilege to share with you this day and wishing you God's peace and love as we continue to serve him. Are there anybody else have any announcements to share this morning? Yes, please. Whichever one of you wants to go first. Ladies first, okay. Any other announcements this morning? As I always like to kid, and does somebody else have an announcement? Oh, yes, I see. Please. Good morning, everyone. Um, this year, our elderly now group will be um, deciding to have the Christmas tea party. Um, everyone should have, um, the ladies should have received um, any of the invitations that was made by or your Courtney over here. She has been making them the last many years. Um, it's just a card, but uh, has all the information you need. It's going to be on Saturday, December 12th. 12th. And um, the, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board in the Marfax. So um, ladies, please sign up. We'd love to have you come. We have a lot of activities um, to enjoy this year, so I hope you come. One other thing, um, my boxes, um, we're going to have a mic offering on December 6th. That's a whole week away. Thank you. Any other announcements? And as I like to always kiddingly say, if the sermon gets too boring or anything else like that, you do have your insert to read. <laughs> I'll try not to make it that way, but it just in case. Please let's stand now and join in the opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter, suffering, and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgive you all of your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May he who has begun this good work within you bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God for O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. These all look to you. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Psalm 22, verses 1 through 3.
be with you. I'm going to ask you to join with me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 8. The whole commandment that I command you today, you should be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you, and let you hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know. Nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in the heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and over those hills you can dig copper, and you shall eat and be full. And you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please rise and join with me in the gradual. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord. You open your hand. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet and gave him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. 2020. A year most of us probably want to forget. For a myriad of reasons. For some. Whether it's losses. Whether it is just such change. Whether it is the pandemic. Whether it is lifestyle changes. Whatever it is. 2020 is a year most of us will never, ever forget. And things have changed. Look how you're sitting on here. Look at that thing you've got on your face. Life has changed. And so we come to Thanksgiving 2020. An unusual Thanksgiving, isn't it? We're hearing stories that people ought to have small groups, if none at all. Families maybe should not get together the way they've been normally getting together. It's just so different. So what about Thanksgiving 2020? Where do we find ourselves? What goes through our mind? What are we thankful for? This past week I saw a program or a little thing on Twitter about an interview made by a news reporter with his family. His three children were sitting there. He had a computer screen in front of him and he turned to them and he said to them, what do you think about Thanksgiving 2020? What should we be thankful for? And the kids kind of... And one of the little little girl in the middle, the young lady in the middle said, maybe it's not what we should be giving thanks for. Maybe we should say what has really changed. And he kind of paused. And then he went to the computer screen. And he says, I was wondering about Thanksgiving 2020, so I went to this shelter, to this place where people gather to gather food, to gather together. Different. And so we went there. And you see the camera following him there, and you come to this shelter and you see people lined up, safe distance, 
waiting to get inside, to get food, and to do other things. And he said, I wonder if I ask these people what Thanksgiving means to them in 2020, what they would tell me. And so he did. One woman, he said to her, what does Thanksgiving 2020 mean to you? And she says, oh, I'm breathing. I'm alive. To another, he says, what does Thanksgiving 2020 mean to you? And this gentleman says, my arms work, my feet move, I'm thankful. And he kept going around asking people, what does Thanksgiving 2020 mean to them? And they came up with the same kind of idea, the same concept. Finally, he met a man, and he said, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but this man was named Gabriel. And I said to him, Gabriel, he wouldn't tell me his last name, he just likes to go by Gabriel. What does Thanksgiving 2020 mean to you? He says, well, it's going to be different this year. He says, I've lost my job. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my home. I don't have much of anything. And I know I'm going to have to eat Thanksgiving by myself. But this I do know I'm thankful for. the 63 thanksgivings I had before this one with family and friends. And maybe the one that will be next year. Let me find what it is. It was Ernest Hemingway who is attributed to having created a personal twist on the legendary thing that Ernest Hemingway had written. It was only six words. These are the six words that Ernest Hemingway had written, and it has changed all kinds of things for all kinds of people because these six words, Ernest Hemingway told a whole story in six words. These are the words. For sale. Baby shoes never worn. Think about it. For sale, baby shoes never worn. Six words. A whole story. And maybe that's what needs to come from us now. In fact, I have the author and the writer of the article I read from the New York Times said that he asked this question about, give me the pandemic in six word memories. And this is what people wrote. Not a criminal, but running mask. Every day is a bad air day. Home. Economics. Rationing butter. Bourbon and sanity. Can't smell the campfire on Zoom. Oh, here's a good one. Regret saying, I hate school. Oh, and the list goes on. I'm not going to read them all to you, but interesting. Memories in six words. I read that and I thought to myself, what about Thanksgiving 2020? How would you describe Thanksgiving and your gratitude in six words? Hmm? Think about it. I began to wonder about it myself, 
and I know about our family, and I know about our daughter, our son-in-law, our granddaughter, and their dog and two cats. So it's Laurie, Phil, Kendall, Beanie, um, Carol, help me. Fluffy pants and tick and uh, <laughs> that talk about a memory blast, folks. What? Jughead. <laughs> Got it? No wonder I can't remember it. Laurie, Phil, Kendall, Beanie's the dog. Fluffy pants is the white cat, and Jughead, Jughead is the black cat. Six. Oops, six. <laughs> I'm doing well this morning. <laughs> Six words. The other one I thought about, and please don't be embarrassed in the back. I thought Thanksgiving this year for me, Carol, 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 Carol. <laughs> Thanksgiving. What do we see in the midst of all this? Stuff that has changed us. All this stuff we are struggling with. How do we see Thanksgiving 2020 in the graciousness of God? Able to gather and worship? Worship, scripture, communion, hymns, choir, fellowship? What would your list look like? What six words would you write? What six words would express for you in a short way Thanksgiving 2020? That's my challenge for you this week. You heard some of the ones I've come up with. And you heard the story, and you heard about all the things that are going on out there, and we still don't know everything that is going to be for us. But someone also said, I remember it was Dr. Fucci who said, Thanksgiving 2020 is going to be different, but remember last year and there's another year coming. There is. So Thanksgiving 2020, what is it? How is it? It's different. But in it, can we not hear the words of the Scriptures? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endures forever. Yes, mercy, grace, Scripture, word, sacrament. God's love. His forgiveness. The gift of His Son. Life eternal. Food. Nourishment. Life. That's it. That's Thanksgiving 2020. Remember the, lie, the story of the parable of the ten lepers. Can you be the one to proclaim God's love and mercy and thanks be to him? Can you in the midst of all that's going on and all that's going is changing, can you be the one who sees his hand at work in spite of what is happening. Six words, my friends. That's all I want you to do this week. I don't care what else you do. Go make your turkeys, do whatever else you do. I want you to find time this week to write six words about what Thanksgiving 2020 means to you. In his grace, and his love, and in his mercy. 
For give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. And all God's people say, I go through this every time, but that's okay. And all God's people say, Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. Amen. Able, and we join in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, Begot and not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and descended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, and God is by us. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we join in the litany this day, we want to remember in our prayers not only those individuals on our weekly announcement, but also we want to remember in our prayers Pat Heflin, who's resuming uh, chemo for reoccurring cancer, Fred Tate, who's hospitalized after beginning radiation treatments, and Barbara Dobler, 
uh, aunt of needy Lohmeyer declining and entering hospital after failed cancer treatment. Remember them also in our prayers this day. We pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For President Harrison, our synodical president, for President Denninger, our district president, and for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For President Trump, Governor Northam, and for all public servants, for government and those who protect us, especially those who are serving in the military and first responders, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all people here present who await from the Lord the great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, need, and for all who suffer or are dying, that you would comfort and heal them, especially Barbara, Pat, Fred, and those who we now name silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, as we gather in this time and all the things that are happening around us, help us to find the way to reflect in our lives the graciousness of the gifts that you give to us that are new every day. Strengthen us in the ministries you have given to us. Help us to be witnesses to this world and all those we come in contact with about your love through your Son, Jesus. Strengthen us in times of weakness. Give us the words in times of t- when we're not sure what to say. Give us hearts to respond. Give us minds to understand. Give us eyes to see so that others may see what we do and give glory to your holy name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the faith who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, we pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this true body and blood of our living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, keep and strengthen you in the one true faith. Go in his peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Please rise if you are able. I'm going to ask you to join me in the post-communion collect. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.
Thank you.